and then like you you I, at the end of jewelry and you you had them go out and you know pick up pick a new man Dennis Welch who again and and with the greatest respect to Dennis like but you know you're talking about you know, like in a way I suppose the Manchester United the Liverpool's of this world in 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 hurling and a man gets the job there who didn't really have any kind of a proven track record you know and again mm-hmm. with an entirely new team you know starting from scratch I mean we had the, the situation lately with Jerry Wallace the former trainer of the team and I mean training has become very scientific now you know and he stated in a recent newspaper article like that he has all the stats and figures for the Cork team over the last you know eight ten years or whatever that he was involved and he was never even approached for these numbers and the other objection I would have as well with this new team was that um like they came in and uh, reinventing the wheel I call it you know that you take a guy like like Jerry O'Connor who's you know to my mind still one of the best midfielders not just in, in the county but in the country and, like, they try to make a centre-forward out of him. You know, now, it worked with Newtown Chandram last year, but, I mean, I know from talking to Jerry, and I did an interview with him where he said he, did, he didn't like centre-forward. You know, he went there because, he, you know, Newtown wanted him to go there, but midfield is his best position. I'm convinced of that, and I think he showed it again last Sunday when he came on. Um, you had Fraggy Murphy put the centre-forward. He's not a centre-forward. You know, you had Niall McCarthy, who is a proven centre-forward, and who, too, during those four years, I think, you know, was a very good centre-forward for Cork, put out in the wing. You had uh, Ben O'Connor, who absolutely hates the right corner, put into the right corner. You know, he's the best right wing forward that we've had in Holly for the last 10 years, put into the right corner forward. I mean, these kind of things, like, well, you've, you've got new management coming in, reinventing the wheel, you know, to, to putting pl- fellas into, into places where they don't fit. The one thing you'd have to say about Dennis Welch, and, you know, in, in the dealings that I've had with him so far, is that I'd say he's very frank and honest with himself and about himself as well. And like they did say that, you know, that they would be examining every aspect of this, including, you know, their, any mistakes that they made themselves. And I think that they said, you know, I mean, like, uh, again, like you had a young lad, uh, Keane McCarthy, thrown in as a swing forward last Sunday on, you know, one of the greatest wing backs of all time. The man that uh, Brian Cody has said is the best defender he's ever seen, J.J. Delaney. Like, and I think that was just completely unfair on the youngster, you know. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I think that's like... I, I, even even the way it was done, Paul, like this, you know, this business about announcing one team and then playing another, you know, I mean, it's not the Cork way, number one, but number two, I think that, you know, you're, you're showing weakness by doing it because what you're admitting almost from the staff is that you're on the run here, you know, that you're trying these funny games, like which I don't think, you know, you should do with a, with a team like like um, Kilkenny, I think, you know, Kilkenny don't do it, I mean, they just come out, they name their team and that's it, and whoever they're playing, they'll face up to it and, you know, they'll, they'll make their switches on the fly, but I think Cork, like, by doing that, you know, just, I mean, the dogs in the street knew anyway that Keane McCarthy was going to be playing, you know, so what the, the reason kind of was, I don't know. They also knew that Shane O'Neill was going to be playing, and I think, you know, like, if you're giving the hope, we say, to Cork's uh, supporters going up there, you know, and, and they travelled in force again, as they always do, and you give them this hope that Shane O'Neill is going to be up there, and supporters play a part in this as well. Paul, you know, I mean, psychologically, you're out there and you think, you know, we're going to have Sean O'Neill and then you learn that he's not playing. Well, I mean, that's deflation, deflationary for the supporters as well. And I think that they're going to be that, that little bit quieter than whereas if they knew it, you know, a week before, they could be stealing themselves for us. But, you know, I think there were a lot of mistakes made managerially going into this game. You know, but I, I still think that, like, if, you know, if the, if the, I think the players are there, you know, and I think that the facilities are in Cork now, like, the, you know, the, the top facilities are there. I think we have the trainers as well. You know, I think it's just the case. I think that, um, I think it would be um, far be it for me, like, to tell Dennis Welch or anybody else what to do directly. But, I mean, I, we all have our opinions, and I think that it would be beneficial, like, for Dennis Welch and, and his management team to have maybe on board a couple of those guys from that team. That know, And the other thing as well, you see, Paul, we went away completely from that game that had been successful for Cork. For Cork. I mean, just because um, Kilkenny kind of sussed out, you know, that particular game on that particular day in the All Ireland final in 2006, doesn't mean that you should throw everything out, baby and bath water. With this particular group of players, it was working. You know, I think it just needed to be tweaked, you know, and advanced. But I think that you know, people just panicked about. It. I mean, people were talking like even uh, three, four, five years ago that that half back line was finishing. So that half back line was still, you know, very strong up to the Kilkenny game, and even looking at the Kilkenny game. Paul, I think that like um, Kilkenny played that game very cleverly. I think they 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 kind of bypassed the Cork half back line. 
to a large extent. Mm. You know, it was midfield. They were, they were absolutely outstanding in midfield. And, uh, you know, we, did, we didn't compete there. But, like, they bypassed and, you know, they took the battle to, I think, to the cock inside back line, which was where they saw the weakness. Again, I think all these things could be addressed, you know, and I, I do. So, I mean, I wouldn't be as pessimistic about cock calling as I hear other people being. Not at all. Yeah, I think you've uh, pretty much covered everything there, Dermot. But uh, just before I let you go, um, Dennis Walsh, he's, uh, he's had his two years in charge now already. Do you, do you think he'll stay on? Well, I, absolutely. I do, yeah. You know, I, I mean, he was given that, that job to do. And like I said, I think he, he is also, you know, a cerebral type of individual. Like, he does think about the game. Um, talking to the players, you know, they, they had great time for him. They said that, you know, he, every night he came in there, he had a new set of drills and everything else. So, I mean, you know, obviously he works very, very hard at it. But I think that's, you know, the, that's what he can do here, I think, definitely, is hook up with somebody from, you know, somebody like the Jack Williams or the Patsy Morrissey from that, that old management team, bring them on board, you know, and like and start going back, I think, as well, to, you know, what made that Cork team great during that period. You know, because definitely, like, the Cork developed the style, I, and I think we saw it again to, in, towards the end of that, that game against Kilkenny last where the two O'Connors especially hooked up in the old style game. You know, and they brought Patrick Hogan into it as well, and they scored some terrific points. And I don't care what anybody says. I mean, you know, Kilkenny don't slack enough, but like they they were doing it, they were doing it really, really well, linking up well, running well, a very, very intelligent holding. You know, the one area I think that Cock would need to have adapted that game as well was in defence. You know, where like it's all very fine throwing the ball around like that up in the in the full forward line, where if it breaks down, well, okay, you know, it's. It, you can fight for it, it's just going to be delivered up the field, but if you lose it up in your own uh, half-back line, a full-back line, and it's pounced and, and pointed, you know, psychologically, that, that, that can be a huge blow. You know, if you look at Kilkenny, like, the only time that they hand passing defence is when they're under real pressure. If a guy has an opportunity to clear the ball, he will clear it. But you look at some of the cock backs, like, and still, even when they have themselves have an opportunity to clear the ball, they're looking around for the short pass. I think get rid of that part of the game, but, you know, continue it, like, I think that, you know, that kind of game that, that brought them so much success. Like, I, you know, I, I think it's just a question of adapting, learning, and, and moving forward. But, like, no, I wouldn't have the head down. As a cockman, I wouldn't have the head down at all. I mean, the other thing to remember as well is, you know, this, was, this is a, a truly outstanding Kilkenny team. And that first half performance by them, and even talking this a lot, the Kilkenny people themselves, was as good a performance as, the, as this team has ever given. Red, red, red.